Hello guys you are welcome in Solution Bix. Today our topic in construction joints in concrete. It is the most repeating question in competitive exams and vivas for assistant engineer. If you are new here please like and subscribe my channel for more videos. So let's move towards the topic. Joints in concrete. Joints are usually part and parcel of structures made up of concrete, steel, masonry etc. Concrete structures usually show a variety of joints. The most commonly experienced among them are main four types. Construction joint expansion joint, isolation joint contraction joint. I will explain one by one. Number 1 Construction Joint this type is the commonly experienced joint in most concreting work in spite of the fact that this type of joint is actually not a must in concrete structures unlike the other three types. A construction joint is provided when concrete pouring needs to be stopped due to some reason and then it is continued again later in other words. The joint could have been avoided if the entire concreting were completed without any stopping in between so that no part of the structure needs to be continued by concreting, at a later date. If concreting is continued within a day or two of stopping the work, the construction joint is thoroughly water cleaned and then a layer of rich mortar is applied onto it before proceeding with the concreting. For an older joint its surface is roughened first and then water cleaned well to get rid of all dirt, loose materials etc. Thereafter, a layer of rich mortar is applied and concreting is resumed. Number 2 Expansion Joint Concrete structural members such as slabs, pavement, walls etc. Expand in hot environment. For members of smaller dimensions I. E. Beams, columns, etc. This expansion may be negligible. For members exceeding certain lengths and widths the expansion may be more than sufficient to induce thermal or flex ural stresses and thus induce cracks in the structure unless they are given the opportunity to expand freely. These cracks, besides weakening the structure, can lead to corrosion of steel reinforcement due to ingress of moisture through them which can pose even bigger problems. An expansion joint is provided in order to allow a concrete member to expand freely in hot environment and thus relieve the unwanted stresses so that no damage is caused to it or the structure as a whole. Expansion joints are essential elements of long bridges, railway tracks, long walls, piping networks etc. These joints are provided in such a way that the overall structure is not weakened due to their presence. Diverse materials, for example, fiber impregnated bituminous boards, cork, polystyrene, rubber etc. are used for preparing these joints. Typical expansion joints in concrete structures can be about half inch to 20 millimeters wide. Number 3 Isolation Joints in concrete structures isolation joints are provided in order to relieve the stresses developed due to differential movement of the adjacent members or structures, thus preventing cracks, or damage, in the members or the structure as a whole. Isolation joints around machine foundations also perform the function of cutting off the vibrations generated by the machines, thus safeguarding the adjoining slabs or other structural elements from possible damage. Isolation joints may be required at the junctions of horizontal members, slabs etc. and vertical members, columns, walls etc. when there are possibilities of significant differential movements. These joints may very well be required when a slab or a roof of a newly built structure has to meet an existing structure, or, a new block has to be extended from an old building in relatively softer soil or in a filled area. And the last contraction joint. When concrete sets and dries it tends to shrink. This shrinkage or contraction can cause hair-like cracks on the surface of the concrete. Besides affecting the appearance of the finished surface. These cracks could lead to other problems in the course of time. 
contraction joints are also known as control joints. These joints are created in the concrete surface by inserting thin strips in fresh concrete, by saw cutting using either dry cut or wet cut saws, by grooving using grooving tools etc. An important aspect is the depth of these joints as unless the depth of joint is adequate they won't serve the purpose well. According to a popular thumb rule the depth of a contraction joint should be at least one-fourth of the depth of a concrete slab. Okay that is all thank you for watching if you like this videos like and subscribe.